Welcome to Lavo's VSM video training series on panel building. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways to display sources and targets on our hardware button panels. At the moment, we've got configured what we call direct takes. For example, hitting frame sync 2 as the target and CCU4 as the source immediately routes CCU4 into frame sync 2. Now we've got our nice undo button, but this could have actually happened on there. Whoops. We don't really like that, do we? So now, let's imagine we have a novice operator who does not like direct takes. What we could do is we could lock or we could create a take button. We happen to have available to us a take button in the panel editor button toolbox. This is the take button. We'll put it here on page one. And notice in this section of page one, this is not part of a group. So no navigation button changes will have any effect on this take button. It will be on all panel screens. Notice as we click through on various targets, the take button remains on all pages. That's because it's not part of a group on the first page. So now, whenever we select a destination, let's select frame syncs in this example. Notice that if I select frame sync 2, Notice that the current source is frame sync 9. The previous source is CCU4. If I would like to route something else, for example, CCU2 into frame sync 2, I select it, but notice there's a red box around CCU2. We haven't seen this before. Why is it red? Because we have a take button now configured on this panel. And notice now in the lower right corner on the take button, it's blinking. That means that it's waiting for you to do something with it. It knows that you've selected a route, but have yet to actually press the take button to make the route happen. In order to actually route CCU2 into frame sync 2, we now have to hit the take button. And as we do it, notice that our red border around CCU2 turns from red to silver. And you can see now in the primary virtual matrix that CCU2 is indeed routed into frame sync 2. So as long as you have a take button available, then the take button will be active. Now let's say that you only want the take button for some of the routing you do, not all of the routing. Let's take for example our frame synchronizers. I can remove the take button from page 1. Now let's click on frame synchronizer here in the panel editor window. And that navigates us quickly to the frame sync button page. Then we'll add the take button within the group on this page. Notice it's inside the group, group number 3, not outside the group. Now let's go to servers or patches, across frame syncs to cameras and targets, back to cameras. You see that there's no take button on these pages. There's only a take button on the frame sync page. Let's demonstrate that. Let's route a CCU into camera 1. First we select camera 1, then CCU 2 as the source. And quickly it took. Because there's no take button on this page, the route took place as soon as we selected the source. Now let's see again with the take button installed on the frame sync page. We select our target and then our source. In this case, we'll take camera 5, putting it into frame sync 1, and the route will not happen until we press the take button. Notice for the pages where we have a take button and the undo button. We can still press our undo button, but that route won't actually take place until we press the take button. The undo button has the red frame around it. That means that it's waiting for us to hit the take button. And then once we hit the take button, it turns to silver. Okay, so now let's talk about some additional labeling on our buttons. Let's say that in your situation, you would like to see at a glimpse all sources routed to all the targets. For example, here on the frame sync page. Because of this, it's rather important to remember to keep all the primary labels in your signal paths rather short. A short character length makes it easier for the legends to fit on the button panels. A short primary label is especially important when you would like to see both the source and the destination on the same button surface at the same time. Remember back when we set the properties for our panels. Let's review that by going into the panel list and look at the properties. Notice this checkbox. It's labeled where possible, let VSM panel render the labels. Once we check this box, let's look back at our buttons and notice how they've changed. 
they look a little bit prettier because they're being rendered by VSM panel. Keep in mind that that has no effect on your hardware panel. So if this panel is visible on a hardware panel, nothing will have changed. Since we're working with hard panels ultimately for our video trainer, we'll turn this feature back off, but keep it in mind. Let's say that you would like to see the sources and the targets on the same button at the same time. What we need to do is tell the button to display the source as well. We do that in the panel editor by right clicking in the lower left hand corner of the button and we select display source. But notice quickly on the buttons it's becoming very hard to read. The text is very small. That's because FrameSync 2 is already too long of a name. CCU2 is okay, but the name FrameSync is just a little bit too long. There are a couple of ways that we can fix this. By default, our panels will always display the primary label. Let's go into our primary virtual matrix and make some changes to the identifier. Notice when we click on it, we're offered several different label fields. In this example, we have eight different label fields available to us. When we select the primary label, you'll see that the frame sync section is grayed out. That's because we didn't create any primary labels for that yet. So all VSM can do without a name for this label field is display the actual name of the signal path. But again, being grayed out, you know that there's some additional information not available. So let's say that we would like to have a shorter name for the frame syncs. Let's double click that in the primary virtual matrix and it brings up our properties window. As you can see, we have multiple tabs available to us. And in this case, you've probably guessed it, we'll go to our labels tab. Let's type in a user label now for this primary field. We'll call it FS1. Now let's look at the button on a button panel. And there you go, FS1 is a much more readable designation. Let's go into FrameSync 2 and change that as well. FS2. You see, you have a default label and a user label. There are other video tutorials available in our series that discuss more deeply the differences in these labels. Now remember we mentioned there's a couple of ways to fix this. Let's go into the second option by going into the signal paths window. Let's open signal paths. And then remember that we can quickly type in the first couple characters of the words that we're looking for. In this case, we'll quickly type FR on the keyboard and the signal path window list jumps to the frame sync section. Notice that there are what may appear to be duplicate entries because there's a source and a target for each of these signal paths. Frame sync 1 has both a source and a target, and so forth. And look over to the right. Notice those labels that we've added, FS1 and FS2. They're both reflected here in the primary column. Now let's sort by virtual matrix. And you can see frame syncs are sorted 1 through 10, first as targets, right here. What we'll do is select all of these frame syncs at the same time by using the Shift key. We click on frame sync 1, press the Shift key, and then click on frame sync 10. Now we've grabbed the whole group. Kind of a neat feature here is now we'll go back into the primary column and we'll start typing these in manually. But it's going to be very quick and simple. We click into the first cell and type in FS1. Let's keep the caps lock key on on your keyboard because it'll even be quicker that way. And every time we enter the name that we want, we just press enter and then VSM jumps to the next line automatically. If you had slightly more complicated labels, you could also use your clipboard in Windows. Control C for copying and Control V for pasting. We're not doing that at the moment here because these are only three characters, or four in the case of FrameSync 10. Now we'll go back to our panel editor and select Display Source for all the additional FrameSync targets. And notice as we do, the three or four character FrameSync legend that we just created shows up on the buttons in a much more readable form. This should look pretty good on a hardware panel. So here you can quite easily see what has been routed into every single target at a glance without having to press any other buttons. Sometimes as you start changing your legends, they may not always refresh on the panel. Simply click on the ID number in the upper left corner of the panel and hit enter. That refreshes the panel. It's best to do that whenever you've made significant changes, just to ensure that VSM panel is fully resolving what you're creating in VSM.